Okay, if anyone's got questions about 222 and shit like that, now is the time before we start playing some Overwatch. Uh, if you guys watch the Watchpoint show and stuff, then you'll have heard my opinions about some of it. Um, I was I was personally not a fan of 222 when the idea was first raised, but I'm kind of coming around to it. So, um, and I've I've now come around to it, so... I can uh, speak to both ends of the argument. Squad stream? You want me to squad stream? All right. Okay. Did I feel the recent earthquake that hit California? I felt the one... I felt the first one, but I f didn't feel the second one. But that's not related to roll queue. Two two twos on PTR, go and try it. Mm, I don't think so. I'll just play some normal stuff for now, and I'll wait until it hits the, the regular. Who benefits the most from two two two, and who will be hurt the most? I think, <clears throat> I think it's probably London who benefit the most from two two two. They allow it allows Profit and Birdring to play their best heroes. Maybe, maybe Philadelphia as well. But I think Philly are a bit of a dysfunctional team at the moment. They don't look great. Uh, but it's probably one of those two teams who'll be hurt the most. A lot of teams without Arissa players. In my opinion, we're gonna see. Quite a bit of Arisa. I don't know, and I don't haven't seen scrims or anything like that. It's possible that I'm completely wrong and it's all playing dive or it's all playing fucking monkey wrecking ball or something, but I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot of Arisa. And it'll probably start with Arisa Hog and then it'll move to Arisa Diva as people figure out that Diva is actually pretty pretty good. Satchel, on the desk you said gladiators are gonna be less creative in two two two. Why do you think two 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 is less creative? I mean it literally gives you less options to work with. Like you can't play, um, you can't have your DPS swap over to, um, okay, so even within the realms of 222, it makes you potentially less creative because your DPS can't swap over to play, um, the, uh, like, for example, with gladiators. Gladiators have a composition where hydration goes over to play the Orisa. And they have their off-tank play Bastion or something because it's easier. Is it their off-tank that plays Bastion? I can't remember exactly what happens anyway. No, they, they, they play that with 3 DPS, but they play Hydration on the uh, on the Orisa. But anyway, they they play that roster because they want to play a certain 2-2-2 two, two, two composition on point A and a different 2-2-2 two, two, two composition on point B. And two of their players swap roles in between point A and point B because one of them is better at whatever the weird off-tank role is. Um, they aren't going to be able to do that because you have to lock in your role at the beginning of the map. So, you are locked in as a DPS player at the beginning of the map. I think. I think that's how it works. Um, it might be in between rounds. I'm not 100%, but I think it's at the beginning of a map. Um, also, it doesn't let you play, uh, the triple DPS compositions that we've seen be, uh, creatively utilized. And it, I'm, I was worried that we, and we still might get this kind of situation, where there is a 2-2-2 composition, like some kind of bunker composition, that would previously have been really easy to break with quad DPS, but you can't play that anymore. Or maybe even triple DPS, but you can't play that anymore. So, that, to me, is still a big issue, but I think the benefits of 2-2-2 uh, uh, outweigh that potential issue, and the answer to that potential issue of one composition becoming dominant and really strong is just some balance tweaks, which... The developer team has said they're going to be monitoring this 2 to 2 situation really closely, making balance changes, which some amazing balance changes are already on the PTR, and they've got um, their eye on stuff for the future too. So I think, uh, I think, although it might be a bit of a shit fest at the beginning in terms of what the... I, I think it'll be really fun for the beginning of Stage 4, and then we might get a meta that's a bit either boring or feels weird or it's a, a little... It can't really be stale because it won't be around for that long, but it might feel uh, less less dynamic. Um, but I think that will definitely change as the uh, as the year goes on. How's Dallas going to perform in 2-2-2? I think Dallas are going to not be very good in 2-2-2. I don't think they have a leadership figure on their team that can help them transition from triple tank to 2-2-2. And I also don't think that they're... Um, their DPS players are flexible enough to be able to work in a 2 2 system. They've got AKM and they've got Zachary. Um, I suppose they also have Taimu there as well, but... 
a lot of overlapping hero pulls and a lot of stuff where they don't um, have that deep hero pulls in the beginning anyway. Um, how will groups with 222 work? Uh, I think on the PTR you can take a look at the moment um, and test it out already, but I believe the way that it works is that you have to... If you are grouping with other people, you have to be within the SR of whatever role they have chosen. So say they're a Grandmaster tank player, but a bronze level DPS player, obviously never going to really be the case. Um, if you're all around bronze, you have to play with them on that role that they are bronze at. You can't play with them at the role that they are GM at. How much diversity do you actually think there'll be? I think it will be a large mixture at the beginning as teams figure out what the optimal strategy is, unless there is something that's outrageously broken. If something is incredibly broken, it will be figured out in scrims before we go into stage four, and that will be all that people play. But I doubt that that'll be the case. If, any, if, if that was the case for anything, it would be some kind of Arissa Hog composition, though. So I think we're going to see a lot of Arissa Hog, and I think we'll see a bit of other stuff on other maps that don't lend themselves that well to Arissa Hog. Because previously, the counter to, like, the Clockwork Vendetta kind of comps was triple or quad DPS, in my opinion. So the other counter is just playing the same kind of compos compositions, but playing it better than them. Having said that, I personally find it a lot of fun, at least at the moment, to watch kind of Clockwork Vendetta kind of compositions. And Shanghai Dragons kind of compositions as well. Would I want to watch them for an entire year? Mm, probably not. But would I want to watch any meta for an entire year? Mm, probably not. Um... Okay. Whoa. There's a lot of messages. Do I think the justice is going up? Nope. Except that Elevo and Lawsish are joining, which means yes. So, like, do I think the 222 change is going to help the Washington Justice? No. Do I think Elevo and Lawsish would have helped the Washington Justice no matter what meta they're in? Yes, absolutely. So, as long as Janice and Sansam hit the bench and Elevo and Lawsish come in, I could definitely see an improvement for the Washington Justice. I still don't think they're going to be great, but they they might be okay. Charlie goes boom. Thank you for the four months. I, I don't want to play duo woo -wo with you. How good looking is Jeff? I'd give him roughly an 8 out of 10. An 8 out of 10. Toronto? Toronto are pretty interesting. I don't know how they'll perform. Again, it all comes down to what the matter is. Who knows what the matter is going to be? I think the ultimate charge changes are pretty good for the game overall, but um, I, whenever people talk about reducing ultimates as only being good for the game, I get a little bit like, eh, I'm not so sure, because you need ults in Overwatch to be able to break through choke points. If you had a game without ults in Overwatch, then stuff like Bunker Comp would just be outrageously powerful, because there's a lot of shielding and choke points in the game, and to break them... The, the game is designed around the fact that ultimates come up a lot and that the ultimates are used to break through choke points or break defensive holds. If you don't have them, then certain heroes become much less useful. Ones with massive ultimates like perhaps a Junkrat or the Sombra, although Sombra charges are ult so quickly that it really isn't going to be affected. But say Sombra charge are ult at a reasonable time, that would be affected. Um, so, yeah, that kind of stuff. Uh, let me just remove this D and D extension from my stream. Uh, squad invites from Bren and an extension that I need to turn off. In the meantime, what's another question from the chat? Houston, uh, I don't think Houston are going to be very good. I don't think Houston are a good team. I don't think that they have good players on that roster. I think they are good when they figure stuff out ahead of other people so if they figure stuff out ahead of other people then maybe they'll be okay but i think you know my opinions on houston from previously talking about them in like the visa streams and stuff like that i don't think they're a very good team and i think they have much bigger things to work on uh than you know mastering uh 222 i think they've got fundamental issues how do i reckon hunters will do with the lock Depends what main tanks are being played. Eamon has played Orissa in the past and was actually a, a fairly heavy Orissa player, but he hasn't played that much this year. Um, it seems like Wrecking Ball is going to be a majority. So, so, okay. The biggest thing I see 
as a big change in 222 is the role of the off tank. I think the role of the off tank is going to be the largest thing to change moving forwards. It's previously almost always been a Diva one trick. The amount of Diva one tricks that are in the league is astounding. Can you think of any other hero where somebody could one trick it into the Overwatch League? Because I can't. Maybe Winston last year, but there's there's really no other hero that people can one trick. Tracer? I mean, I don't think there's even. Can you guys name me a, a Tracer one trick that's in the league? Most of the Tracer players are actually really talented at a bunch of other stuff. I mean, Striker, that's absolutely not true. His Widowmaker's really nutty. Sebi Orbi played Roadhog and was fantastic at it way before he was, uh, you know, notorious as Tracer or whatever. Snillo? Oh, Snillo's an interesting one, actually. Um, but Snillo's mostly playing for the Fusion Uni at the moment. <clears throat> mm, Asher, I mean, we're, we're digging the bottom of the barrel here. There isn't really another hero in the league, though, like D.Va. I mean, there are some people who are genuinely in, like, MVP contention. People like, um, okay, the absolute best players in the league can also play other stuff. So people like Cheobin and Fury and that kind of stuff, they also play a bunch of other heroes. Um, Fury in particular is not going to be affected by this in the slightest. That's because Fury is a fucking god. But guys like Space, I'm pretty worried about because there isn't really another off-tank hero that I would want to run Space as my main player at. I, what else would... You want to run him as Zarya? I'd rather have a Zarya player. You want to run him as Hog? I'd rather have a Hog player. You want to run him as uh, Wrecking Ball? I'd rather pick up a Wrecking Ball player. Space actually has space has an all right hog and a pretty poor Zarya. Let, let's be reasonable. Let's be reasonable, people in the chat. When you're comparing him to the other people that majority play Roadhog in the league, I mean, I would have a lot of other people up there. Like Fury has a nutty hog. Note is another example for sure of people who are like um, diva players that uh, will struggle. I think like Mecco, Doco, Space. See, Poco actually is pretty good at Zarya and Hog, so I could see Poco actually being all right. Um, but a lot of divas in the league. I I think this this role that was previously just I am a diva specialist. I sometimes flex off to other stuff. Is going to be like a bunch of other roles are really required. You might see a meta. In fact, this meta coming up. You might be required to play Hog most of the time in Arisa Hog compositions. Diva sometimes to counter the enemy Arisa Hog. Like if you want to play Arisa Diva yourself to shut down their hook combos and stuff. Um, and you might also have to play Wrecking Ball sometimes in Winston Wrecking Ball compositions, which was previously the job of the, the main tank most of the time. Uh, and there might be a couple of instances where you're able to get away with Ryan's Zarya. But I'm, I don't really see much... I would be very surprised if we end up seeing Ryan Zarya over Arissa Hog or Arissa Diva. Um, but, okay. I, I don't think... I think the off-tank is going to be the next role that it has to really expand. And it's possible that the end-of-season results this year are based on who has the more flexible, versatile, and better off-tanks on Hog and Diva and possibly Wrecking Ball as well. Um, but, yeah. I think that'll be very interesting. I've, I've no idea how Florida's going to do Industries underscore because Florida have just integrated a bunch of new people as well. So, fuck knows. Um, Brigitte the Megita says, do you think it's right that 222 came partway through the season? Now, if you watch the Watchpoint show that we did just, just now, or rather that was aired just now, um you'll see that the Puckett asked me the same question, and we asked that question to John Spector, who's one of the very, very high-up people in the league. Um, and he said that his point of view, which I agree with, is that it would be worse for the rest of the season to be played on a patch that was, um, what, uh, the July patch once we get to the end of playoffs in September. And the game would be nothing like what the casual viewer... Uh, turns on their stream to watch. Like, can you imagine if GOATS, which is triple tank, triple support, or uh, double tank, Sombra, triple support, whatever kind of GOATS comp you want, and <clears throat> and 
uh, the Shanghai comp where you're playing triple DPS a lot of the time. Can you imagine if those two are the compositions that end up being dominant throughout the rest of the season? Which is highly possible, and I would even say likely. <clears throat> and yet the game itself is locked into 2-2-2. Two, two, two. So if the developers think that this is good for the game, and this is the right time to release this patch, the league has to adhere to it. Like, it, it's not even a question at that point. I think their, their hands are, are essentially forced. Uh, they have to. It, it would have been nicer had it been between stage two and three. You know, if, if that had been a possibility, it would have been nicer to break the, the season nicely in two. But this is such a fundamental change to the game. It's almost like Hero Limit 1 being introduced again. So yes, it's going to probably, I say fuck up the playoffs. It's going to introduce a large amount of variability into stage four and the playoffs. But there's not going to be a change like this again in the future. This is like the biggest change that ever happened to Overwatch since the Hero Limit won three years ago. It's not the same as last year where there was just a, a, a patch change. Patch changes are going to happen for, and they will mess with the standings and introduce variability. But again, that's that's just a... That's just a fact of the game. That's a fact of playing a MOBA-esque esport, that these patches do happen. And there's limited control over when they happen and how they impact the league, because the league stretches over seven months. But it would have been foolish to insist on playing without a 2-2-2 lock in the Overwatch League when the whole of the game and all of the casual players are expecting when they tune into the Grand Finals as a casual fan to see 2-2-2 lock. It would just create so many question marks for everybody who are tuning in. At the same time as well, I can empathize completely with the developers who are not so much focused on the Overwatch League. If you're a developer and you think that 2 2 lock is the best thing for the game, which is a very fair viewpoint to hold, then are you going to wait until October to release a patch that's done in July just so that the Overwatch League Season 2, before the Overwatch League has even begun, really, next year is the true beginning of the Overwatch League, when we get to proper geolocation, and we're not just playing out of LA. Are you really going to delay a patch for four months? Such an enormous game-changing, possibly game-saving for a lot of players patch uh, for four months, just because the Overwatch League doesn't want to disrupt its second-ever season? I, I don't think that's reasonable from their point of view, either. I is Panda, thank you for the three months. And Drew as well, gifted a tier one sub to Curvy Gamer Wife for two months. I love that name. Lucifer MBK donated 100 bits and said, Harblu plays a good Hammond and Hog. Do you think he might be a decent pickup if a team doesn't have one? Cheer 100. I think what's more likely is that um, teams will end up uh, picking up players that already have a good grasp of how to play in the Overwatch League and grinding those heroes i think it's more a case of grinding rather than picking up people who are already specialists on those roles especially because if somebody specializes and gets very good at roadhog they're probably going to eclipse the people that are already you know known for their roadhog anyway like that's what we see every time as soon as it's a tracer meta people that you didn't think of previously as the greatest tracers in the world grind so much that they become the greatest tracers in the world that's the same thing that's going to happen for every meta cherokee 54 thanks for the twitch prime uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, there we go. Is Choi the best Roadhog in the league? Mm, I don't know. Probably not. Again, we haven't had a Roadhog meta. I hate answering questions of like, is X the best hero in the X hero in the game? But if we don't have a meta that surrounds that, because how are you supposed to know? Choi Urban's like one of six players that have played a series on Roadhog. Like, what is he? He's one of the best of those six, I suppose, but doesn't really tell you anything. Anyway, I can certainly as well see DPS players like Agilities or Hydration or Kib or Sebiolbi or Taimu being run as the off-tank player in Stage 4 just to play Roadhog if all you have to play on every map is Roadhog. If all you have to play on every single map, or at least for one map, is Roadhog, then I can see Taimu waddling in. Waddling. I was. That's, that's not a reference to how Taimu walks. Taimu has a very normal gait. I'm just meaning enters the stage and sits down and um, ends up playing the Roadhog. 
That, that was genuinely not a fat joke as well. I felt bad about it. Maybe I'm worse for feeling bad about it, because if I'd said waddling about agilities, I wouldn't have apologized, because in my, agil in my head, you know, agilities is a very slim individual. Is it bad to even think to apologize to Taimu in that instance, because I would have just used that language for anybody? I don't know. Clearly I did something wrong, but I'm not sure it was the language that was wrong. I think it was the double take that was wrong. Yeah, and also Taimu has lost a bunch of weight. He's uh, looking a lot healthier. Anyway. Anyway. Um, I remember previously you were against the 222 lock, says the Manic Doctor. Have you changed your mind now? I still think there are potential large issues with a 222 lock, but they can, just judging by what the general populace seems to think about it, it seems like it's probably going to be a good idea. I, I thought actually that, that the r slash Overwatch subreddit would be maybe annoyed at the fact that they can't just jump into competitive and play um, whatever they want and swap whatever they want. Like, oh, I like to play Roadhog when I attack King's Row Point A, but I always play Genji on King's Row Point B, something like that. Like, these are the kind of takes that I was expecting from r slash Overwatch. What I actually got was the r slash Overwatch uh, a couple of um, threads that were in there were like, oh, this is awesome. I don't, get, I don't have to play with four DPS on my team all the time. Which, fair enough. I mean, I haven't played in gold or silver or bronze ever, and plat. Currently hard stuck in, don't worry about it, boys. I'm going to dig my way out. <laughs> but, um, it's, it's rare for me to actually encounter teams that are just, you know, like 5 DPS or something like that. It's very rare. So I didn't even perceive that as something that affects the a large amount of the um of the player base but if it is then clearly the benefits outweigh the the, the cons the only thing that i'm really concerned about with 222 <clears throat> is if a meta ends up happening that's even more busted than goats was and hopefully the developers will be right in the sense that it's easier to balance a 222 game i don't think that necessarily logically follows but it certainly reduces the amount of options. Like, you can't just stack a bunch of characters that all have the same, you know, a huge amount of shielding, huge amount of healing, this kind of stuff. So it should be a little easier to balance. Um, and the developers seem like they're very committed to making the roll queue and roll lock uh, work well for everybody and, and tweaking the numbers and tweaking things and making sure that, for example, Brigitte is a playable character even though she can't be run alongside two other uh, supports and Roadhog will be a capable uh, tank, you know, this kind of stuff. So, there you go. Do you think Hammond or Roadhog are more likely to be changed with Roll Lock? Um, I've no idea. I've no idea. I honestly just have no clue. It's very, it's very strange to... I, I think anybody that claims they know what the meta is going to be or knows that some hero or other another hero is going to be useless or overpowered or uh, or broken or too weak or whatever, that's going to take a couple weeks of scrimming before you really figure that kind of stuff out, I think. Ratbot says, It's funny how flex DPS players in the league are trying to convince themselves that they're going to play Genji like he's ever going to be in the meta again. I could see Genji in the meta again, for sure. I think the big thing that stopped Genji being in the meta was Brigitte. And... I think that the um, the changes to Brigitte are going to make her much less of a, a hero that's able to take offensive positions. And besides that, if you want to play Genji and try and have some kind of dive composition, then uh, you can still do that if the only thing to worry about is Brig and one other healer. And he doesn't get his ultimate that much slower. So... I don't know. I, I could certainly see Genji having some limited uses. I think when people think about Genji and Tracer, they immediately default back to the idea that they should always be a mainstay pick, like it was when we played Dive. But I don't think that's ever going to happen again. I mean, maybe it will, but I don't think Tracer or Genji will ever be, you know, absolute uh, must picks. The entire way that we think about the game is can someone play Tracer and a bunch of other picks? Can someone play Genji and a bunch of other picks? I think they're just going to be like, uh, maybe not niche, but um, more more balanced heroes that don't dominate the meta. I 
I don't know whether Farah is going to be used as much. Farah might still be useful for um, for trying to break bunker compositions, like a Farah Hanzo comp might still be pretty useful. It's possible, though, you, that it might be the case right now that you just can't burst down um, Arisa bunker compositions with double DPS. Most of the time, people would use triple DPS. They'd have, like, the Farah and the uh, Hanzo to poke the shield and make sure that it was breaking, but they'd also have a Sombra to charge EMP or something like that. And if you can't if you can't run all three of those at the same time, it's possible that teams might prioritize picking the Sombra and view Shield Break as a fairly um, impossible task. Unless you run your own um, Bastion or something like that. Ash actually has pretty good Shield Break as well, so you might see that in a limited role, <clears throat> particularly on maps a bit like uh, Anubis where she can play around the high ground. And yeah, I can also see scenarios like Spence, OW is saying here, where Rascal plays support or something like that. You know, if Batiste becomes meta, then why wouldn't you run Basco uh, Rascal on, on support? If Hog becomes meta and you can play it the whole map, then why wouldn't you run some insane Hog player? And slowly these players will go back into uh, their main roles. But at least for this season, I can certainly see some weird scenarios where, okay, even though the game is locked 2-2-2, two, 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 you actually have three people that are thought of as DPS players on the stage. It's just that one of those DPS players is playing Hog or Brigitte or Batiste. Is Super going to be sent to the bench now? I highly doubt it. I think the reason that Smurf was played was, one, because he was able to play a lot of Arissa, and Super hadn't had the opportunity to play that much Arissa. And two, because he could communicate more effectively with the other Korean people that they wanted to run in that lineup. Um, I will be interested to see if Sinatra gets played. But Super, I think, should be played for that team. Will 2-2-2 for Overwatch League refer to characters in-game or roles of players? Could a DPS player play Batiste and an off-tank play Sombra, or would the DPS players be locked to a DPS, etc.? Eiffel 2K. The way it'll work is, at the beginning of the map, the team will say, okay, here's our six-man roster, and here's who's playing our two tanks, our two supports, and our two DPS. And they will sit in those positions so that the UI lines up, so that it's much better for everybody at home to be able to watch, and they will play that role now that does still allow you to field harry hook as your soldier 76 if you want to but if harry hook wants to swap he can only swap to damage heroes he can't swap to lucio um it, for the next map you could have harry hook swap over to this position and play the lucio and mercy and anna and whatever the hell else he wants and bring in akm to play dps but that's the kind of stuff it'll also limit stalling as well yeah Although there will still be very good stalling compositions. Like, you can still run a uh, a Winston and a Wrecking Ball and a May and, uh, so, uh, and a Tracer or whatever the hell you want to stall with as long as it fits within 222. But there's still very good stalling compositions inside of 222. Who's my favorite Overwatch League player to watch play on stage, says Ploppus in 777? I don't really know. Um, I enjoy watching Prophet whenever he plays, but not particularly on the Zarya because it's not where he excels. Um, I don't know. I don't really have a great answer for you, Plopperson seven seven seven. Uh, don't know, don't know. Now I've seen a couple of people say that they don't really get the idea of sitting people in specific positions, and I've seen players complain about that on Twitter as well. It's the, the advantage compared to the uh, disadvantage of having people sit in specific positions is by far and away better to have them sat in specific positions. Uh, and the only people that, uh, that have a downside from this are the players themselves, and it's a minimal downside. But the massive advantage is for the people at home. The broadcast product that you put out to everybody else is so much better. In Contenders Korea, in Apex, the whole way that OGN was always run 
was that you had set positions that you sat in and that lined up with the UI at the top of the screen so that you can see it's damage, damage, tank, tank, support, support. And so as you glance at the screen, you can see, oh, they have two support alts, they have one support alt. At the moment, we've learned to deal with it, and so you might not realize that it's an issue. But when you're a new player, or when you go from watching Apex VODs to watching Owl VODs, you can't even tell whether teams are running mirrored compositions without glancing at the screen for like three seconds. Three seconds is, is a ridiculous amount of time in Overwatch to be able to figure out what the hell people are watching and, and what ults are going up and stuff like that. So the, the, the benefit, the, the biggest problem with Overwatch as a viewing product is that it's difficult to watch and so any thing that you can do to make things easier to watch is worth the ben uh, is worth the downside especially if the downside is only you can't see your uh, see your partners and be able to see where they're positioned and that kind of stuff uh, when i watch and i've watched every overwatch league game this season and last season from inside the blizzard arena where i can see the players looking and talking to each other the amount of time you genuinely look at each other's monitors is very little the players like it because it's a comfort it's a safety net it's how they scrim if they want to they can but the majority the vast 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 majority of the time like 99% of the time oops as i just spit on my mon uh, on my mic they are looking at their own screen and figuring out what's going on from there. So, the advantage to the UI vastly outweighs the advantage to um, the the disadvantage for the for the um, for the players. Plus, the players never even used to have that option, and it wasn't even something they complained about. So, I think it'll be fine. Did I make those snacks by microwaving a potato? No. Yeah, apart from the time that I spent in Visa Hell, you're right, Sloth Farm. Ratbot. I know you don't think Titans are goats one tricks, but there is no way they'll be less good. They can only go down from where they are now. You mean they'll be, there's no way they'll be better? They can only go down. Uh, yes, I agree. I think the Titans will, uh, will suffer. And especially if it goes to an Orisa Hog meta, and especially, especially if it goes to an Orisa Hog Widowmaker meta. They don't have a great Widow on the team. Stitch, Stitch has actually improved a lot while he's been sat on the bench. He impressed me a lot when he actually played it uh, recently, because I previously have in my head the idea of what, what, how good he was at Widow when he played in Contenders and Apex, and he was pretty mediocre compared to the Widowmakers that we have at the moment. But I think Stitch has just been grinding and ranked constantly because Stitch's Widow, when we saw it in the playoffs, was actually pretty fucking nasty. And so, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong with this, but my previous analysis was always that Stitch was a pretty mediocre player. Hureg, I thought, was genuinely their best Widowmaker player on that roster. And he would be if Stitch hasn't been grinding it. Um, so if it becomes a Widowmaker meta, I can see them... Um, having some issues there especially if it then becomes an Arisa hog meta as well because uh, janu isn't really there uh I, I haven't really seen janu play much hog he basically just plays diva and wrecking ball um so i do think they'll go down depending on what the meta is if they can play dive or something like that then they will pound but if they are forced to play double sniper kind of comps then i think they'll suffer a little bit but i think they'll still I mean, they're obviously going to make the playoffs. They'll still be the best team in the Pacific. They'll probably still be the number one team overall just by uh, overall ranking. And I would be surprised if they just bomb out in the in the beginning of the of the playoffs. They might not win, which they would have had a much greater chance at if the meta had never changed, but I think they'll still be all right. Why will you miss Quad Tank, Pineapple Man? Quad Tank was so brainless. It was actually just a like a Lucio ferrying people around so that the Roadhog could get hooks. That was a... Yeah. Is NYXL back to number one? Depends what the meta is again, man. Depends what the meta is. If it's an Orisa Hog kind of thing, then maybe not, because they struggled with that a little bit last season in the playoffs. 
Your world on fire says, sorry if you've answered already. To clarify, stage four is roll lock and today's PTR balance patch is for playoffs. I don't think they've announced when the PTR balance patch is going to hit live, um, but it seems reasonable to assume that that might be the case. Uh, unless they hold the patch. Uh, they might hold the patch so that it doesn't go into playoffs. I don't have any information about that. I don't know. Um, but normally, if there's a PTR patch around now, then it'll probably make it in, you know, the next stage, which would be playoffs. I, I, I don't know. But uh, something like that is probably going to be the case. Finally, off-tank players playing Zarya. Honestly, I hate to burst your bubble, but probably not, because I don't anticipate very much Zarya even being played. I think it'll be mostly Hog and Diva, uh, with maybe a little bit of Wrecking Ball. What will happen to Bumper's DPS? Well, the Bumzo is rested in peace. Can we all type some Fs in the chat for Bumper's Hanzo and his Junkrat? Because, Lord, I loved it. Thank you for giving us it. It was a blessing. We never knew we needed. And it made the Overwatch League so much better. But an F in the chat to Bumper's DPS, which did deserve to die. And I'm glad it did. And I'll die on this pint of vodka in remembrance. It's water. Don't worry. Okay. When is the next episode of Casters and Castles? This Monday. Do you think Moira will be used as bait for the halt hook combos? Uh, maybe, but you can't... You can't be sure... Like... You can't only put Moira in the halt. Uh, the, the players are going to be much better at halt. They're not just going to only catch the Moira. Um, but if if possible, you might be able to find that. There, there will probably be some awesome outplay things with uh, tanking stuff with Moira, but uh, I can't quite exactly uh, think what they're uh, think exactly what they're going to be. I mean, maybe if you are trying to body block for for hooks, but you can't really body block a hook in a halt hook combo because the way that you get grouped together in halt is kind of RNG. Yeah, Moira can fade out of Hook. Moira can fade out of Hook, Earth Shatter, Gravs, that kind of stuff. It is a strange change. Um, but I think they they want to make Moira more of a niche. And I think Moira's niche is that she can avoid shit, essentially. If you're playing a Moira, it's like, I'm a slippery motherfucker. Like, the, the mercy is like, oh, I'm going to heal and damage boost and resurrect... And Moira didn't really have a niche. And so I think Moira's new niche is, I'm going to wiggle past you. You ain't locking me down. This dude has been asking about Elevote's Diva for the last 10 minutes. Please save him. <laughs> Plat chat is going to be a, on Tuesday. Who was asking about Elevote's Diva? Honestly, I don't know enough about Elevote's ability on other... Uh, I know that Elevo actually has a pretty good Soldier 76 on him from way back in the day. But, um... But, I don't know about his Hog, or his Zarya, or his Ball, but... Elevo's Diva is good. I don't think it would be top 5 in the league, though, no. Top 10? My gut says no, but he might be. Also, the fact that we're not going to be playing a diva only in in all likelihood, we're not going to be playing a diva only meta. So, it's a bit of a weird question anyway, because the entire way that we rank off tanks is going to change. I think. I don't think Who Are You will be that big a pickup when he's when he turns 18. Um, I think Who Are You is fantastically skilled, but it seems like he has some attitude issues or something like that because he keeps getting passed from team to team. I don't think there'll be a huge bidding war like there was for Decay, but I think he will be a big pickup for whatever team gets him. He would fit really well on a team like Dallas Fuel. Do I think Gregory is going to play Hog? Envy's got a pretty good Hog as well. Maybe. Gregory's got a pretty good wrecking ball as well, actually. 
So I could see a world in which Gregory gets played. I think this patch actually might be better for Gregory than maybe any other individual player. Because, not because she's going to end up being the greatest in the world, but because I could absolutely see her being just sat on the bench the entire time in stage four, if it was D.Va only, because Envy has been added to the lineup. But if it's D.Va, Hog, and maybe some Wrecking Ball, then I could see, uh, I could definitely see a world in which Gregory's fielded over Envy. Young Jin would obviously play the Roadhog if all you had to play was Roadhog. But if you have to play Roadhog and D.Va on the same map, then I don't think you run Young Jin. Especially because Ding can no longer fill in for you on D.Va. It's a little bit sad, honestly, that we don't see DPS players flexing over to D.Va anymore. You know, like Libero made his name doing that, and Erster, and um, Ding. Uh, these players that are just hyper-flexible and could play anything, and so flexed over to play off-tank for certain teams. Uh, Dante as well, yeah. Oh, Seagull, of course. Although, Seagull wasn't really the same. Seagull didn't play DPS and D.Va in the same series, as far as I can remember. Seagull hard-swapped from DPS to D.Va. But maybe that's wrong. I can't quite remember. He did last season. He was playing DPS and D.Va in the same match. Fair enough. Hot take. Dallas need Naced more than who are you? Naced would be a beast. He played Hanzo and D.Va. Okay, I can believe that. I just forgot. What is what on my hand? On my hand? Nothing. Do you mean this? This is guacamole. You ever heard of it before? It's made of avocados. It's fucking delicious. What is this tweet from Sleepy? New Moira. Okay, let's, let's take a look at New Moira. Look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing is, most of these aren't really going to matter. Like, I think this seems hilarious at the beginning because you've got, like, the. The idea that everybody should be CC'd or CC a bull in the game. But I think this maybe just adds like a whole new layer to how you play Moira. Like you can deliberately tank pins for the rest of your team and shift out of them. Uh, it would be ridiculous in the second clip for a McCree ever to flashbang a Moira. Like this is just going to be a dumb play. Like why would you ever waste your CC on a Moira that you know isn't going to be affected by it? So that's, I mean, that's... Not so much New Moira being dumb as, like, the the McCree himself just not, not playing around the change. This, I kind of like... This, this is a weird one, honestly. This is a really weird one. Because the Moira, the Moira on your team, their job would be to scout Junkrat traps and then fade out of them? Question mark? And the Sleep Dart is like, I mean, when are you ever going to deliberately tank a Sleep Dart? Pretty much never. Um, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think it's a dumb change. I think it's like, I think it's, um, I think it gives a niche for Moira. But I also don't think that Moira, I think Moira is another hero that probably needs to be reworked. It's maybe just the only hero that needs to be reworked right now but not because of the fade just because she isn't very satisfying to play but why but why do you why do you think she shouldn't be why do you think she shouldn't be allowed to fade out of cc like, why shouldn't there be one hero in the game that can fade out of CC? Because Reaper can't? I mean, so what? 
breaks the game's rules. What do you mean? There's no game's rules. There's no consistency. This is a fucking MOBA game. My immersion. Let Reaper do that. I mean, why? why but why would Reaper? She's already a low skill hero. I can see that. It, de it definitely raises the skill, fl uh, the, the floor of Moira. In-game inconsistencies. Uh, the only thing you have to keep in your head is that don't CC Moira. That's all you have to think about if you're a character that has CC. Anybody else on the field is a, is a reasonable target apart from the Moira. So, but I mean, that's not even a forehead thing. Like, it's very easy not to CC a Moira, unless she makes a cool play and, uh, and catches it for somebody else. Antipaters, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Yeah, or play around her, see, play around her fade. And now, like, you CC on her when she uses fade. I don't know. It raises the skill floor of Moira, but it also adds a couple of things that might be pretty interesting for top-level Moira players. Like the idea of catching pins for other players or something like that. I don't know. I just think, fundamentally, Moira probably needs a rework because she's very un... Not unfun to play, but, like, unsatisfying. It feels like you don't have that much impact when you're Moira. Um, you can't really do anything cool as Moira. Which, uh, yeah, I think, I think, uh, I think we'll probably need to be fixed at some point. But I also don't think that the, the fade change really matters at all. She'll shit on bad players even more. Or just kill her. Forehead. Cut short, Brent. Thank you for the six months. Not sure if this has been asked, but what was my reaction to the almost comedic amount of leaks of 222 that happened? Just kill the Moira forehead. They need to fire you from the table, dude. Good lord. <laughs> is that... Is that someone saying that I should be fired from the desk, but they've substituted the word desk for table? <laughs> And those are the people whose opinions we don't listen to. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. The table. Uh. But yeah, I just don't think the Moira change is that important. I think they're just trying to give her a bit of a buff because Moira would only ever be used in quad tank kind of scenarios against EPS, and they're just trying to figure out a way that of her being used in 2-2-2 uh, in two 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 kind of compositions. But I, I don't think it's that bad, because I think they're... I think once 2-2-2 two 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 gets figured out a little bit by the developers and they feel like the game's in a good place, I can totally see them uh, using uh, Moira a little bit differently. Do I think GOATs made teams and players better overall? Yeah, at certain things. At certain things, for sure. I think it made them respect uh, pu ability cooldowns and punishing enemy ability cooldowns, like even really small ones. Um, thinking about them and, and... Obviously, the big ones were always punished in a bunch of different compositions. Like, Bubble was always punished. Like, if you're playing Dive into a Zarya, you always knew to, you know, force out the Bubble and then Dive them, that kind of stuff. But, um... Uh... Even things like um, punishing D.Va using their micro-missiles, stuff like that, because you know that you have a, um, a damage advantage if you're in that kind of position. Anyway. Uh, the, the other thing, though, is that GOATS was incredibly consistent, and you won't be able to punish cooldowns in other metas as much as you will in GOATS. GOATS is hyper-consistent. Like, you know how a game... You know how a fight should play out because nobody can really clutch by aiming. Uh, they can only clutch by using abilities and you can keep track of, their, of the enemy's abilities. Whereas in a Widowmaker Tracer meta, it's not just abilities that the Widowmaker and Tracer can use to clutch. They can literally just click on you better and then you lose. So it's much less 
consistent and predictable. You can certainly use the fact that you have an advantage, but you're still not guaranteed to win. Or you, you still don't even have as large a chance of winning. So there you go. What is this? ESPN. What is this? I'm most impressed with this little old man knocking down free throws. He's incredibly consistent. Th this guy's this guy's like 70 years old and just nailing free throws over and over again. Why did you link me that video? Why have you linked me that video? I wanted to inspire you. Is that... I thought it was going to be some joke about balance. Yeah, I thought that was going to be like the, the, the Overwatch balance team implementing 222 or something. I saw that. I think Jeff is an absolute boss. He's like, if Shakespeare can be creative in a sonnet form, which is the most limited form of poetry, then you guys can be creative in 222. I was like, Jeff, you're giving people a lot of credit. Shakespeare was a goddamn genius, and I've met a lot of people in Overwatch Ranked who wouldn't be able to spell Shakespeare, and I mean that from the bottom of my soul. I think most of you in chat wouldn't be able to spell Shakespeare. If I asked you Shakespeare's first name, I don't know whether you would know it. If I asked you what a sonnet was, I don't think you would have a clue. So I think that Jeff has so much, so much optimism for this community. Jeff. Yes, his name was Jeff Shakespeare. Yeah, you actually nailed it. Well done. Well done. Well done. West Ocean Ghost, thank you for the six-month streak. Why, West Ocean Ghost? Why, why does it make you sad inside? It was a troll? Yeah, maybe. Spelling isn't everything? That's very true, Aaron. Very true. I think... Mm. William Shakespeare invented words, which is very similar to Twitch chat as well, so maybe... <laughs> maybe they are more similar than I thought. Yo, Mr. Knight, thank you for the Twitch Prime. I have no idea what the meta is going to be on the new patch, Dr. Dix, so I don't know who the best owl team is going to be. I can kind of imagine that it might give a boost to um, Philly and London, but I don't think that... I think London will be better than Philly, and I don't think that London will be the best. Have we discussed Sombra yet? If not, can we? What, you mean the patch change to Sombra? I like the patch change to Sombra because it shows that they are the developer team still has the overall state of the game on their minds and not just the average player. The win rate for Sombra is atrocious across the board in, in ranked. Like, it, in ranked, especially at lower levels, Sombra is just like a potato pick. People don't coordinate and they don't know how to farm EMP and the hacks just go completely unnoticed. And so Sombra is just like, uh, like a throw pick. Um, but... What I like is that they, the developers are not still buffing Sombra. They obviously realize that Sombra is uh, w mad OP at the top levels. And so they're trying to mitigate that by making changes that will increase the ability for skilled players to shut down Sombra whilst still not really screwing with the lower level players as well. Like, uh, if nobody's calling the hacks, it doesn't really matter that they've been reduced from 6 seconds to 5 seconds. 
and the EMP activation time, I mean, when, when people have got the awareness of a pebble, it doesn't matter that it's increased from 0.5 to 0.65. Do I think Sombra still needs to be nerfed? Yes, absolutely, massively. But we will see how... I think it's very difficult to tell when there's so many moving pieces exactly in what way she's going to need to be nerfed in 2.2.2. So I would... In, in all things with 2.2.2, I would just say we don't really know yet. Let's Let's figure out... If Sombra is still really broken, and in what way Sombra is still really broken before demanding some kind of changes. I think there are still many more things to tweak before we get to a good place with 222, but I'm pretty confident that uh, the developer team is committed to uh, to making that the um, their, their goal and making that uh, an achievable target as well. Rip Dallas or nah after 222? I think Dallas rip. I think Dallas rip. Can you name the five teams that haven't made a stage playoff this season off the top of your head, Sideshow? Says Charlie Goes Boom. Justice, Washington, um, wait, I've just named Justice and Washington. What the fuck? I meant Justice and Mayhem, but I said Justice and Washington. Uh, Justice, Mayhem, um, Paris, Justice, Mayhem, Paris. See, I was going to say Boston, but they did. Justice, Mayhem, Paris. Ch Chengdu? Justice, Mayhem, Paris, Chengdu, and... Who else is down in the Papega tiers? Outlaws did... Valiant did. Uh, ooh. I'm going to go with Guangzhou. Was it Guangzhou? No, Toronto did. Toronto placed third in stage one. Yeet! I nailed it. I nailed it. Ding, ding, ding. And I didn't have 600 people also shouting out the, the answer right next to me. So there you go. No, Dallas did make a stage playoffs, because I remember Dallas got absolutely slammed by the Vancouver Titans in the quarterfinals. Uh, okay. All right. All right, let's... Uh, do we play some Overwatch, or do we keep asking questions? I don't know. Answering questions. Uh, the Asta guy. Rascal's the only real Batiste player now. Will Batiste not be used now that Rascal can't play it? Rascal can still play Batiste. If the team thinks that Batiste is meta, at least on one map, and they can run it the entire map long, they could still run Rascal. It's just that Rascal can't play DPS at, in the same map. So it's not that every team has to submit. At the Like, the team, the league isn't going to the teams and saying, all right, all right, Sonny Jim, which of your players have got uh, what's what's the classic UK? Hello, hello, hello. Which of uh, which of your players have got DPS permits? Then I want to see I want to see a license, and you can't play DPS without a fucking license. So hand over your DPS licenses. Mm, what's this, rascal? You played Batiste. Well, Sonny Jim, you ain't playing any more of that, are you? It's just it's just that when it comes to the individual map, it's like oh, okay, this is our roster for this map. Say it's Gibraltar. For Gibraltar, we think Batiste is very strong. So we're going to field Rascal, who's normally our DPS player, but we are going to lock him into playing support for this, uh, for this um, map. Thoughts on the Philly charge trade? I don't understand it, if I'm perfectly honest. I don't get it. I don't understand. Rio seems like a pretty good main tank to me and the Guangzhou charge lest we forget just beat the Shanghai Dragons the Guangzhou charge's most recent game was beating your forever defending stage champions the Shanghai Dragons well yes Happy played like an absolute nutter on um, Widowmaker but also Rio and Hopper were a pretty good uh, tank line that allowed for quite a bit of flexibility. Like, Rio plays uh, a capable Reinhardt, a capable Orisa, and a pretty good Wrecking Ball. 
Andy's pretty good at Winston. That sounds all right to me. I'd probably want Rio in the roster, even with Fraggy there. And then Hopper, okay, he's not the best diva in the world, but is he at about the same level as Bishu, especially considering Bishu hasn't had playtime this season? Yeah, probably. So I'm here scratching my head, like, what? Why, why, why are these guys going to Guangzhou? And then as for Kib, I could see why Kib would want to go to Philly. And I could see why Charge don't really have any need for Kib now that Nero has really come online. Because Nero is looking like a very good player uh, with a lot of potential and a huge hero pool. But also, what is Kib going to do for Fusion? Maybe play the Roadhog for them, but Poco's already got a good Roadhog. Andy can play Diva, and I, I'm anticipating quite a bit of flexibility being required on the off-tank roll. Is he really going to start over EQO? I don't know. I don't know. Kib is definitely better than Poco on Roadhog. But if you have to play anything other than Roadhog, then I would play Poco. So the only way in which this char this charge uh, fusion trade makes any sense to me is if only Roadhog is being played. I don't know. Very strange. Very strange to me. But also, yeah, I think the, the interesting thing about the fusion is what Formation just said. The team is now looking a lot like the UK World Cup team. <laughs> They've got Hayes and Christopher, and then they have Boombox and Kib. They only need to grab a, a couple other, you know, they just need to grab Cruz in the offseason to replace Neptuno. And then, uh, who else is in the Overwatch League that's English or thingy? Fusions, yeah. Fusions as well. Fusions to fusion, dude. Fusion, fusions. Ah, oh, can you imagine if it was like in the old days of esports where you had to wear the 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 team name as a gamer tag, and you were like, "Hey, my name's uh, my name's Fusions Carpe, and I'm alongside Fusions Fusion." And everyone's like, "Wait, wait, wait what? What's that guy's name again? Fusions Fusion." And you're like, "What?" Or why why did he pick such a dumb name? I didn't know I was going to be traded to the Philadelphia Fusion. Ah, okay, that's that's ridiculous then. All right, fair enough.